Hi, everybody. We're back. <laughs> Thanks for joining us again. We're here for our all day movie workshop with a commentary by David Hofmeister. For those who are joining you, I'm Peter. I'll be hosting today. And as always, I like to give a little run through of the day. So uh, David is going to be uh, sharing the movie uh, to start with, giving a commentary. And uh, then afterwards, we'll have a 10 minute break. And that's a time where you can submit any questions or prayers that you have uh, via the form that we have. And uh, then we'll have a uh, session with David at the end where he can respond to any questions and prayers. So I'm going to pass it right over to you now, David. Thank you, Pete. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Uh, I am so excited about today because uh, I'm always excited when Jesus picks one of our classic movies. This movie is so helpful. This movie is so good that I, I know after we finish this movie gathering, by the time we make it to Q&A, it might just blow all the questions out of your mind. And it's a particularly good movie for freeing the mind of grievances. Uh, if you've ever had some long-term grievances, you know, let's say you've been with spirituality for years or decades, and you've got a couple core grievances that are like, they're like, they feel like rocks. They feel so heavy, or they feel like sequoia trees, redwood trees, or these giant trees that are like grievances. And you think, well, I know I'll make it back to heaven when I can handle these, <laughs> these sequoias that are in my mind. <laughs> I know, I know I'm going to be home free when I get past them, but they seem, they loom large. And I have to tell a story with this movie uh, we're going to see today, because uh, some years ago, I was invited to speak at a Course in Miracles conference. And there was lots of speakers and people came in. And uh, one of the speakers at the Course in Miracles conference is a good friend of mine who's been like really a long-term Course in Miracles teacher. He's taught the course all over the world. and. Uh, and, you know, he's he's taught about it, he's wrote it, he's written books, and he's done countless talks and lectures and everything all over the world. And during this Course in Miracles conference, he said, uh, he said, could I uh, have a one on one with you? And I said, sure. So we go into a room in the, the conference uh, center and and we're sitting there talking and he's saying, I've just got a nasty grievance, a very, very, very nasty grievance that will not go away. He said, absolutely, I've tried everything. And I said, well, tell me about it. And he said, well, it's about this other Course in Miracles teacher. He said, I just, I, every time I think of him, I just am mad. <laughs> I'm just angry. <laughs> and he said, and this has not gone away. This has gone on for years. He said, Actually, I don't know what to do anymore. You know, I just, I'm praying and praying and praying that Jesus will help release this grievance from my mind because every time I think of him, I just, I get so angry. And uh, so I said, well, I'm going to show a movie tonight. <laughs> and I think by the end of this movie, your grievance will be gone. He's like, really? One movie? I said, oh, Jesus has got a movie for you. This is going to pluck that long-standing grievance right out of your mind and it actually did i showed this movie and after the movie was over he came to me with the biggest smile on his face and he mentioned the name of the teacher that he hated and then he went ruby because <laughs> the movie is ruby sparks and he mentioned the name of the character with a big smile on his face because the grievance was gone and he was so happy to be free of this grievance. So you, you may wonder how did we get ourselves in this beautiful Zoom room with this most spectacular movie today, which will be so helpful in changing your mind about everything, about yourself, about the world, 
about your grievances, about your struggles. It's just, it's just so, so, so good. And the way we arrived at this point, as usual, is that you, uh, you wrote down, you voted for your themes. Uh, also, I'd like to mention we have uh, a couple new people joining us. Uh, there's Linda from South Africa. Hi, Linda. Welcome. Nice to have you on board. And uh, and Lee uh, is is from the United States. Lee is joining us today. And so those we have two new people on board on the ship today. And I know you won't be disappointed. You you will be buzzing, buzzing in joy after this this movie. It we have these uh, themes that we vote on every week, and so I just pray. We I, I really look at the the top themes that that you vote on the the top themes and and this week actually the number one theme came in so far ahead of everything else if this was a horse race <laughs> this this uh, top theme won by by five or six lengths of a horse 62 votes comes in here's your main theme this is what you're asking Jesus for help with Realize I do not want to try to control this world anymore. <laughs> that's that's your top theme. You don't want to try to control this world anymore. I think some of you realize deep down that, that yeah, you can't really do it, but you still try <laughs> on a daily basis. You try with, with uh, people that are around you or you... You try if you have a cat or a dog. You you try with with the 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 world, the environment. You know you try to have an opinion, and then of course, it doesn't matter what that attempt is. It doesn't really go very well. <laughs> we 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 never are really happy when we're trying to control the world. Even our body, when we can try to control the body, maybe you try to control the weight of your body or the the shape of your body or the the some the look of the appearance of your body or you try to control people you know we've seen lots of that trying to control parents and children and partners and lovers and and community members <laughs> what what are you talking about i prayed on this i prayed on this <laughs> you what you, what are you saying you know whenever we think we can control anybody we really are are right in the ego's uh uh we're lined up with the ego and we're really not going to be happy because we weren't meant we weren't created to be controllers <laughs> we we're actually terrible controllers <laughs> if if we really are honest we can see we've been it's been a mess it's been a mess trying to control even though we learned we're supposed to be in control of our body and in control of families and situations we're never really in control of the situation. And when we finally realize that, we forgive it and we feel so happy <laughs> in an instant. Oh, wow, that's great. So number one, realize I do not want to try to control this world anymore. 62 votes. Coming in second with 38 votes tied. Tied for second. Keep my lantern lit all the time. <laughs> Keep my lantern lit all the time. Keep your heart happy and, and lit in God all the time. Seeing that my inner and outer world are the same. Oh, that's a big one. My inner world and my outer world are actually the same. They aren't even similar. They are identical. Uh, what we perceive as an external world is just a motion picture of our thoughts and Without exception, if there's something that we look on the screen and we say, no, not good, I don't like that, it could be anything. I'm thinking of the war in uh, Ukraine. You know, maybe you've seen a few images of what's going on with the war in the Ukraine, and then you you think of, uh, maybe you think of Russia invading Ukraine, and you think of the president of Russia, you know, Vladimir Putin, and maybe you think, Vladimir, 
you know, your country signed an agreement called the Minsk Agreement. You signed an agreement. And now you're you're invading, you're breaking the agreement, you're breaking your word, you're bombing, you're killing people, this and this. I don't like the way you're behaving. Well, those are all just thoughts. Those are all just thoughts. You, you have to forgive those thoughts because only in your mind did Vladimir break the Minsk agreement. Only in your mind did he invade. Ukraine. Only in your mind were there bombs and missiles and tanks and guns. Jesus is telling us that there is no world apart from what you think. So if you want to play the game of grievances and you want to make a case against somebody, in this case Vladimir, let's take Vladimir off the hook. And maybe you say that's going to be a tough one because he's been on the hook <laughs> really for a while. This movie will help you get him off the hook. You know, this movie, we could rename the movie Forgiving Vladimir, uh, because this movie is going to really go at, go at looking at your thoughts. And, and the thoughts you think is where the grievances are generated. And you can let them go. You can't really forgive in a behavioral sense, because the behavior is just a reflection of the thoughts. And if you don't acknowledge that they're just thoughts and let them go, then the grievances continue. No matter how sweet you act, no matter how kind you try to be in form, no matter how loving you try to behave, until you release the attack thoughts in the mind, you won't experience peace of mind. So this is really important for us because some of us have tried to act sweet and it's not gone well. <laughs> We've we tried to we tried to be sweethearts and act sweet and our mind was raging inside yeah grumbling it was raging and grumbling when our we were trying to smile though your heart is aching smile even though it's breaking no come on let's get to some consistency and integrity we're not interested in smiling if we don't feel happy let's not look happy either but if we actually are happy, then great. We will look happy. <laughs> Everyone will feel it too, because it's authentic. It's, tra it's transparent. Okay. Uh, next one is wholeheartedly finding the inspiration within my mind to continue with this path. 36 votes. Wholeheartedly finding the inspiration within my mind to continue with this path. Beautiful. And last, but definitely not least, break through emotional interpersonal dependency patterns. Woo! <laughs> I can see it. That's right. All you psychologists and, and therapists and psychiatrists of the world, uh, break through emotional interpersonal dependency patterns. They they would be signing up for this one. That would make their vocation a breeze if they could just realize the golden key to break through emotional, interpersonal dependency patterns. Wow, that's a big one. That's a mouthful. <laughs> so we have to have a single purpose, uh, is what I would say. And that's what Jesus is going to help us out with today. So. Here's our classic movie. I think I showed this movie years ago at uh, La Casa de Milagros. So it's it's definitely in our Movie Watcher's Guide to Enlightenment, but I haven't showed it for years. And some of you haven't seen it. And, and for those of you who have never seen it, you are in for a major treat today. You will know this movie <laughs> in your heart and you will thank God for such a beautiful teaching movie. Some movies lend themselves to teaching better than others. This movie does lend itself to teaching. Jesus is with us and oh, it's like, ooh, juicy, 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 juicy movie for awakening. This is, it doesn't get any juicier than this. So, before I get into talking a little bit about the movie, I wanted to uh, 
I wanted to set the stage with some teachings from Jesus about, about our mind, about perception, about projection, all the things that we talk about. So I, I grabbed a few snippets that Jesus guided me to from chapter 12, chapter 21, and workbook lessons 53 and 57. So let's we'll start off with chapter 12. The, you know, it's great to watch a movie with Jesus giving us priming our mind. Like he's this, he's priming our mind. Like he's saying, ooh, if you can get the lesson through this movie, it will save you thousands of years in time. If you can just zoom into this lesson. And so he's priming us. He's priming us to get the lesson today. Here's what Jesus has to say. The world you perceive is a world of separation. Perhaps you are willing to accept even death to deny your father. Yet he would not have it so, and so it is not so. You still cannot will against him, and that is why you have no control over the world you made. It is not a world of will, because it is governed by the desire to be unlike God, and this desire is not will. The world you made is therefore totally chaotic, governed by arbitrary and senseless laws, and without meaning of any kind. For it is made out of what you do not want, projected from your mind because you are afraid of it. Yet this world is only in the mind of its maker, along with his real salvation. Do not believe it is outside of yourself, for only by recognizing where it is will you gain control over it. For you do have control over your mind, since the mind is the mechanism of decision. So in this one paragraph, Jesus is saying, you have no control over the world you made. We just used our precious mind energy to believe in an ego belief system in separation, and then it projected out a world uh, that was based on this separation idea. And uh, it's all, the script is written. It's, it's, all, it's all in one unholy instant. It's just like the workbook says, one instant of separation and one instant of holy instant of, of healing release. So it's just, we're, we're allowing ourselves to be convinced to choose the holy instant instead of the, the instant of, of darkness, instead of the unholy instant. That's all we're doing with this mind training. And Jesus tells us, he said, it's already over and gone, so you might as well let it go. <laughs> You're just fooling yourself if you think it's still here. It's done. It's, it's healed. It's corrected. It's a done deal. But if you still are attracted to the unholy instant, if you're still attracted to guilt or pain, if you're still attracted to conflict, then you will still see the images which are over and gone. You know, we're but re reviewing mentally what has already gone by. And also he's telling us that that projection comes about when you try to get rid of something that you don't like or you don't want. So whoosh, the mind believes in the tiny mad idea of separation, believes in the ego, and then ooh, hot potato. Oh, I don't like this. I don't this is a death wish. Oh, let's get rid of it and see it as if it's somewhere else. Let's see it in the world. Let's see death instead of a wish in the mind as 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 biological death as animals and people and things that die let's see the conflict instead of in the mind believing in separation let's see it as if it's fights between people and countries and and arguments and conflicts and well, let's see it as if it's external this is the big trick of the ego is trying to see the problem as external to your mind. 
And all the mind training of the Course in Miracles is saying, you made it up, but it's still in your own mind, and it has not left the mind of the thinker. So if you can see it where it is, if you can face the conflict, the, the fear, the anger, the pain in your mind, you can let it go forever. But as long as you keep blaming others, as long as you keep blaming people, blaming circumstances, blaming situations, blaming politicians, blaming the weather, blaming the climate, as long as you play the blame game, you're not going to be willing to let this go because you believe that there's an external cause for suffering. And there is no external cause of suffering. The belief in the ego is the cause of suffering, but it's not a real cause because God didn't create it. <laughs> so we have to we have to cough it up, spit it up, spit it out. <laughs> you know, let's let it go. You know, it's it's already gone. So we're just doing, we're just acknowledging that it's already gone. The Holy Spirit has already handled this. This is not a future thing. This is a, a present moment release. We're going for that today. Okay, from from chapter 21, Jesus says, projection makes perception. The world you see is what you gave it, nothing more than that. But though it is no more than that, it is not less. Therefore, to you, it is important. It is the witness to your state of mind, the outside picture of an inward condition. As a man thinketh, so does he perceive. Therefore, seek not to change the world, but choose to change your mind about the world. Perception is a result and not a cause. So let's just look at that in terms of the human condition. For human beings, the way that they experience the world is they experience the body, and when they think about their, their mind and their thoughts, they think of their inner thoughts. They're, if you talk to people and say, how are you doing? Uh, tell me about what's going on inside you. Then a human being might say, you want to, you want to know what's going on in my inner world? <laughs> are you ready for that? <laughs> Do you really want to hear <laughs> what's going on in my inner world? Or do or you want to hear what's going on in my outer world? my friends, my family, my situations, my circumstances, the world conditions. Because to the human being, there's a big difference between the inner world and the outer world. Not to Jesus. Jesus knows that the inner world is the outer world. The thoughts that you think you think and the world that you think you see are both the same. They're not similar. They're absolutely identical. You see a war, you believe in war. You see uh, something and you say, that that is sad. Then you believe in sadness. You cannot perceive it unless you believe it. You cannot perceive anything in this world unless, unless you think that it's possible. So if you think that conflict is possible, then you will perceive conflict. So this is an amazing thing because Jesus is telling us that the thoughts that you think you think, part of your everyday daily thoughts and consciousness, and the world that you think you perceive are absolutely identical. And that means that you have become when you believe in the ego, you become a magician. You have magic thoughts and you magically see a world that pictures these thoughts. You also become an inventor. You know, in this world, it's kind of nice. We like inventors. What did they invent? Do they own the copyright? Is it patented? Listen, there's no invention in heaven. <laughs> Invention's not a good thing. <laughs> it's, you know... How many years have we been watching commercials and the commercial for the soap comes on or something new and improved? I'm not interested in new and improved. I want some reality. I'm interested in the truth. I want the spirit. I'm not interested in new and improved. Cake mix, new and improved recipe. I'm not interested. 
in new and improved cake mix. I don't care if it's my birthday. I'm not interested in new and improved. And Jesus has a workbook lesson where he says, I have invented the world I see. He's teaching us that we're inventors. As long as we believe in the ego, we believe we're inventors. And we invent this world, and it's not bad enough that we would try to invent something better than heaven, but we value it. That's the strange thing. <laughs> we, we actually try to invent something that God didn't create, and then we value the invention. We value the invention more than being happy. We value the invention more than being peaceful. We value the invention more than being joyful. That's, that's sick. That's insane to value an invention that God did not create more than joy and love and happiness and peace, which is our natural condition. So you, now you know when the mind is asleep, it's insane. So it's dealing with insane thoughts and insane projections, and it's trying to make sense out of insanity. Yeah, this is what philosophers have been trying to do, scientists, therapists, you and I, all of us, we've been trying to figure out the big riddle of this world. And Jesus says, don't try to figure it out, just forgive it. For God's sake, forgive it. <laughs> please, please forgive it. You know, I, that's what I came here to teach 2,000 years ago, and I'm still teaching it. And I'm just saying, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Don't hold back anymore. Let it go. Let it go. The past is in the past. Yes, Disney comes through again. <laughs> <laughs> Good old Walt Disney, that always gets us where we need it the most, you know. We need to let it go. Okay, let's move into the, to the workbook. Ah, workbook, lesson 53 of the review. My meaningless thoughts are showing me a meaningless world. From workbook 11. Since the thoughts of which I am aware do not mean anything, the world that pictures them can have no meaning. What is producing this world is insane, and so is what it produces. Reality is not insane, and I have real thoughts as well as insane ones. I can therefore see a real world if I look to my real thoughts as my guide for seeing. Isn't that beautiful? We have real thoughts in our mind, we have insane thoughts, and we have to release the insane thoughts and get back in touch with our real thoughts to see the real world. This is so logical. Jesus is just like taking it slow and easy with this and saying, here, I'm going to say it again. It's, it's actually really simple, but you do have to be willing to let go of what you've believed in. It's, it's really very simple, it's very logical, but you do have to let go. And finally, our final warm-up for the movie, I have invented the world I see. I made up the prison in which I see myself. All I need do is recognize this and I am free. I have deluded myself into believing it is, it is possible to imprison the Son of God. I was bitterly mistaken in this belief which I no longer want. The Son of God must be forever free. He is as God created him, and not what I would make of him. He is where God would have him be, and not where I thought to hold him prisoner. Where is the Son of God? In heaven. Where are we? In heaven. <laughs> what is heaven? Reality. Spirit eternity, infinity. Yeah, yeah, that's reality. That's reality. Is God created reality? That's what reality is. And where is it that I sought to imprison the Son of God? In a cage in my mind called ego. Uh, by believing in the ego, I'm believing in a cage. And I'm believing, I think I can put the Christ in a cage and this ego cage, and then 
once I put the Christ into a cage, then I believe the Christ is a body. And we know how that goes. Hmm. We're never really happy with bodies. Even the ones we think we like, it can turn to hate. Even the ones we think are agreeable, suddenly one day they're disagreeable. <laughs> it's a cage. It's, it's a cage that Christ does not belong in. Christ is not really in that cage, but if we think we can put the Son of God in a, a cage of beliefs called ego, that's where the problem is. Now, today's movie is going to take us out of that cage. <laughs> it's, it's going to take us out of that cage because the, the main character of this movie is the title of the movie. It's Ruby Sparks. And um, there's a, a, an actress, uh, Zoe Kazan, who actually wrote this movie and she stars in the movie. Wow, thank you, Zoe. Wow, to write this movie and then to act in it, to show us and demonstrate the insanity of trying to control the world and trying to control relationships. Zoe's just given us a huge gift. So thank you, Zoe Kazan. And basically what we have is, is Zoe is going to play a character, Ruby Sparks, who is invented. We have we have a writer, and he's a very successful writer, and he is have has writer's block after having a very successful novel and being very successful at a young age. He just falls into writer's block. So this is a career issue for him. If he's a writer and he can't seem to write, he sees a therapist and the therapist is trying to encourage him to relax and finally gives him a, an assignment to, to, uh, to write a, a one page uh, article, just a one page article on on his dog and taking his dog for a walk and having meetings a woman meeting someone who unconditionally loves the dog his dog <laughs> with no criticisms whatsoever so the therapist is going to try to help him out of his writer's block by having him find gratitude allowance love and acceptance by writing a one page article on his dog being unconditionally loved and accepted by someone that he meets on a walk. What will happen is as we follow this movie, we will start to see the power of our mind and the, the power that we give to invention. When a writer writes a novel, the writer makes up all the characters, the writer gives words to the characters, gives scenarios and scenes to the novel and to the characters. And the writer basically invents the story. And we're all used to stories. We're, we're all used to stories. So, but we think that these stories of, of our personhood and the stories of, of people we make a distinction between fact and fiction. We say that when we go to a, a, a movie, uh, we wanna know whether it's, it's, it's real and true, it's reality TV or a, real, a realistic movie or whether it's just made up, it's make believe. So for human beings, there's a distinction made between things that actually happen and things that are fictitious. And for most people watching movies, they're, they're just uh, made from novels, made from screenplays. They are all a representation of something that seems to have occurred in someone's mind. Basically, this whole world is a world of imagination. We may say, that our nighttime dreams are different than our daily activities. But Jesus is saying, no, your nighttime dreams are wish fulfillment and your daily experiences are wish fulfillment. 
your nighttime dreams are fantasies, and your daily activities are fantasies. There is no distinction in perception between what is real and factual and what is imaginary and fictitious and fantasy. The line that has been invented between real things happening and fict fiction and fantasy is an artificial line. Jesus tells us all perception is false. All perception is false. Even the forgiven world is false because in heaven there is nothing to forgive. Even the happy dream is just a still another symbol, another image. It's a it's a beautiful image because it's a, it's an image without judgment. But even that is is false. So perception, by its very nature, is not reality. God did not create perception. Uh, God doesn't even know about perception, but the Holy Spirit is the mediator, is the one who's able to work with uh, perception because the Holy Spirit knows that it's false. That's the kind of teacher you want. <laughs> if you want a teacher, you want to tune in to a teacher that knows the world is false because every drama, every conflict comes from trying to make the error real from trying to believe that something in fiction or fantasy is actually real. Real people, real bodies, real families, real trees, real stars. You know, Jesus is saying, no, actually the Holy Spirit knows that this is not so. And that's the teacher you need to follow. Jesus would say to us, that's the teacher I followed. And now I've merged with that teacher. And oh, it's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> because that is that is a, in perfect alignment with God, that spirit is real. Nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Herein lies the peace of God. That's the whole summary of a course in miracles. If you just if you just work with that, you just did your whole life. You just worked with that one little statement. You would you you could go right into God. <laughs> With the one little statement, nothing real can be threatened, nothing unreal exists, herein lies the peace of God. It's very, very simple and direct. So, in this movie, we're going to find a writer who is not happy with his writing career, his journalistic career. He's not happy with his love life. He has a mother and a father uh, uh, that hilariously are played by Annette Benning, great, great actress. And um, it's it's just Antonio Banderas is his his uh, is is her husband. And the whole relationship with Ruby is going to help us with all the key elements of A Course in Miracles. It's going to show us the authority problem. I don't know if there's a better movie that you can find that, that shows you the authority problem. Most of the time when I talk about the authority problem, they say, can you talk about that again? What is that? It's, it's so pushed out of awareness. No one keeps the authority problem in, in mind because that's a, that's a question of who is my author? And Jesus says, God is my author, and the ego says, no, you're your own author. You are the author of your own life. <laughs> what a joke. Even the New Age buys that one, you know. You can create your own reality. No, you can't. New Age, wrong, eh, wrong answer. You cannot create your own reality because God created reality, and reality is spirit. And this world is a projection of unreality. It's a projection of, of error. So in this movie, we're going to see in a very, very comical way how the writer starts to see the power of his thoughts and the power of his words. And that's a step. Uh, 
a step in starting to re remember how powerful your mind is, is to start to realize that you actually are have the power to manifest and that everything that you perceive is actually a manifestation of insane thoughts. <laughs> you know, that's really putting it straight. Every thing that is perceived in, in the fragmented world of time and space is the projection or the manifestation of insane thoughts. And that's important because if we're going to actually forgive the world and escape this madness, we have to start to take a closer look at the thoughts that we think we think. We can't just keep them hidden in the unconscious mind. We have to we have to take the lid off of the unconscious mind. Or let's use a house metaphor. If you've got a house and you keep a lot of your beliefs and thoughts hidden in the dark basement, Jesus is saying, hey, let's open the basement door and we'll go down there together and let's turn the light on. <laughs> let's... Let's go down and let's see if there's a boogeyman down there, or maybe you made up the boogeyman too. <laughs> maybe maybe there's no boogeyman, you know? Maybe all these horror movies that you're watching for entertainment are also based on, on unreal thoughts and insanity. But Jesus is telling us it's more than the dark thoughts. Even your light shadows, even your shadows of what you call the good things in this world are still insane because they're still, even though they're light shadows, they're not pure light. And pure light is reality. Shadows are not reality. We can never find eternal happiness in shadows. We're, we're being asked to give our thoughts over to the Holy Spirit let the Holy Spirit purify our thoughts and let only the love remain. Only the light remain. Take everything else from me and let only the love and the light remain. That's our prayer. So you're going to like this one. It's funny and it's deep and you're going to feel really freed up by the end of the movie. I guarantee it, because this movie is so good at showing you the power of the mind and the power of thoughts, and that you really need to keep the prayer of your heart clear, that you want joy, you want happiness, you want peace. So enjoy the movie. I will pop in from time to time, and we're going to have a great time today. I, I know it. I I promise you. I promise you today is the day of freedom. It is the day of happiness. Yes. <laughs>